Okay, I just wanted to make a short-ish uh, podcast for the uh, Love, Sex and Death module. Um, to summarise a little bit what we've been doing uh, in class on and what we're going to be doing in relation to the work of Philippe Aries, um, who, as I previously said to you, I'm sure, was a French sociologist, I guess, as much as anything, or social historian, right from the 1970s, um, who wrote on childhood, centuries of childhood, but we're looking at his work on death, um, and I've asked people to have a look at the, the book itself, or his books and his essays, and look at some of his primary work, but I think we can usefully summarise um, his views, in that he seems to look at the cultural history of death in the West, and summarise it in certain um, key um, periods, I guess that's probably the best way to describe it. Um, so to take an overview of Aries, um, he wants to characterise death in relation to a period he calls tame death, when death was at least tamed. This tameness is in contrast to how he sees death now, in that he sees death now very much, and he uses this term, as wild. Wild and out there, like something we fear beyond our windows coming and getting us. We see death very much in this wild sense. And he contrasts with the period of the early church, up until the early medieval period at least, um, tame death, then a different shift in the uh, medieval, medieval proper, the high medieval period, through to the approximate, and these are quite approximate uh, takes, the 16th to 18th century, he talks about remote um, death, or remote and imminent death, he gets sometimes called, um, through to a short-lived Victorian death of the other period, sometimes seen as more romanticised death, short-lived but influential, as we'll see, through to a period we see where we see death denied, or the hiding of death, um, or invisible death, um, and that's also quite a truism in our culture about how we hide death and don't like to see it. But he kind of points it out in the 70s um, and will then ask whether we're still in that period. So there's an overview where I wanted to start um, with tame death. But prior to that, he does note that in very ancient periods and in many ancient religions and in ancient phases, excuse me, the dead are impure or unclean. You find places to get rid of them, um, dead bodies, that is, outside towns. Now, he identifies this phase um, as maybe 500 AD or CE, for the common era, uh, up until about 1100-ish. By tame death, he sees death as familiar, as near and constant. It's a kind of, it's commonplace in our lives, a public feature. Um, it's not surprising. We don't get surprised by the fact that we're mortal and that others are mortal. Um, it's not threatening, as I said, it's tamed. Um, so, it's typified by this acceptance and awaiting death and the surety of final salvation. So there's a strong sense in at least what he conjures up in his... And it's quite evocative writing, what he conjures up of um, surety that we'll be asleep to the second coming, to the eschatological end times when the second coming will be. So non-threatening, focus on community. Um, cemeteries are near churches or in public squares. Um, they're not something that we're terrified by in the way we are now. Um, there's some argument as to whether or not he over cherry picks the evidence to support, support isn't it? it's a long period of time in Western Europe's quite a big place so clearly it's a kind of he's painting with a broad brush even though he's picking as you'll see from your reading specific details out um, but that's his kind of his most important period I guess in contrast to the present um, although he identifies intermediary periods is that of tamed death death is tamed uh, then he identifies this period he calls Death of the self. Why does he call it death of the self? And why have I spelled individualism wrong? Oh well. Um, 
death of the self. In a sense, he calls it that because it goes from being the death of a death in the community to death being a preoccupation with one's own period. So in the high or central medieval period, we see this shift. We see the Black Death, uncontrollable, rampant death, not at the end of life, but ravaging through communities in these kind of extreme ways. Um, there's a growing sense of um, individualism. We see, at least for people who aren't really poor, but for richer people, marked graves. So death isn't anybody's death, it's my death. Of course, you might also um, think about this in relation to the fact that in this period, there is a real sense of religious fear. Black, black death, we get a lot of omens, the kind of comets and uh, meteor astron astronomical um, events that are seen as symbols of the end time. So there's kind of this sense of anxiety or fear, a sense of revulsion at death, bodies are more covered, we have shrouds, we have coffins. And over this period, the surety of salvation, the kind of, that gives you that calm that we talked about in the tamed death period, gets eventually outweighed by the fear of judgment, that you're going to be judged by God. Uh, and there's a big, there's a real focus um, on the idea of hell and its torments and the fact that you might go there, you might not be good enough. So, Rather than the surety of salvation and the consolation of that knowledge and that surety, there is a real sense of maybe not, of fear, anxiety, and my death. So a shift away from the taming of death to something else in this medieval period. Um, and this for Aries lasts approximately to 1600, where he sees the beginning of transition period, or two transition periods, transition periods, this one and the next one to where we find ourselves um, in an invisible death situation today. Um, he sees that things like the Renaissance and the Reformation have at least shifted and probably loosened religious control or religious kind of total religious um, hegemony, I guess we could call it, of culture. There isn't the same view of the place of religious faith and domination of the view of death by that. There are other forces. And in that way of seeing of the forces, um, there is a blend of views about death. So on one hand, we see it in this period represented, and he gives quite a few examples in his work, as natural, as beautiful, but also fearsome and dangerous. So aspects coming out of different aesthetic, artistic and literary endeavours and coming out of historical accounts. You start to get a fascination with bodies. People keep um, hair from dead people who died and things like this. Um, you get a shift of burial more outside towns. So that fascination with bodies is starting, I think, to come towards things we'll see later, which is a real uncomfortability with bodies. So we get a mix of attraction and repulsion. So we become both fascinated and repulsed by the dead body. Um, and that, that reaches um, greater heights in periods to come. So. Um, in the 19th century, we see this period which is very influential culturally on on 20th century, on I think it has an ongoing 21st century influence, um, particularly in Western Europe and particularly perhaps in Britain. But the 20th century, the death of the other, who wants to call it. So yes, it's my death, but we really focus on what does take death of other people take away from me? So the focus on death as breaking relationships, what it takes away. This Victorian view of death is short-lived but influential, as I said, it's in part romantic view. Death is asleep until we're reunited with our beloved. Death is a beautiful release from the sufferings of being alive, and the sufferings of life. But at the same time, we get the development of ideas of the dead as pseudo-living. This is great, I think, pseudo-living, you know, kind of the walking dead. This leads us thinking about um, vampires, you know, which are very romantic. You know, we see now with all kinds of abominations like Twilight and the like, the idea of this real blending of vampires and um, rom romance. And there's a lot to be said about why um, vampires appeal to the people they appeal to. We can perhaps explore that in class. Um, so we get this 
sense of the living dead, um, graveyards is frightening, haunted places, also the idea of haunted houses gets really kind of going. So spiritualism, this kind of idea of death as like a bit like being alive, but somehow not, where we can talk to them through mediums, the spiritualist church, things of this sort. But at the same time, and leading, I guess, more towards the modern period, graveyards are still beyond towns, but under civic control. And although they're seen at night as being frightening and haunted and scary, in the daytime, the idea of the family visit to the dead relative um, really gets going. So the idea of clean, well-maintained, civically organised um, council um, graveyards on the edge of towns um, becomes much more well embedded in this period. Um, and this leads us towards the 20th century, the period that um, clearly um, Aries culminates in writing about, um, which is death denied or hidden death or invisible death, depending on how it gets phrased in his work and um, in the work of interpreters. Perhaps one of the most significant features of that is that death is made medical. It leaves the home and is in the hospital. And is, leaves the home and is in the hospital. Um, so death ceases to be natural, but a failure of medics. Um, they have lost the battle. We see all these images of death as a battle. But the chance of beating illness, the fact I think is probably quite a good fact, that most of us are quite pleased about, that we can defeat a lot of serious illnesses, leads to an expectation that perhaps any illness, perhaps there's a chance for any illness to be defeated. So death, the period leading up to death, isn't one of, this is what's going to happen, therefore I must accept it, but can they or can't they cure it? The chance of beating that illness fills death not with certainty, no with certainty, so written which would be not, no with certainty, but with anxiety. Death's always a will it, will they, won't they? Um, and some people want to talk about the death of Ivan Illich, the like earlier, earlier Tolstoy um, short piece as to whether that um, is kind of evokes some of these themes. Read it and see. Um, but in this period, and we're perhaps familiar with some of these um, things, they've become more and more kind of commonplace views of death, I think, in the last 20, 30 years since Aries was writing. Death is seen as private. Don't push it in my face. It's distasteful. It's to be kept away from public view. You know, we see an example I gave in class, I think, um, Dead bodies are moved around towns by, you know, panel vans um, with the words private ambulance often on them and no windows. It doesn't say dead body transportation. You know, we just find that a bit uncomfortable perhaps. Um, a lot of people, an awful lot of people now reach adulthood, at least in our um, country, or parts of it, without ever having seen a dead body. Very unusual compared to the tame death period where death was in the house. From being young you would have seen dead bodies in your or other people's houses or dying people. Um, and he identifies an ex that we suspect excessive emotion, that we like people to keep their grief to themselves, or perhaps visit them, but they, they shouldn't bring their grief into public places. You know, too much public um, showing of grief is seen as being problematic. And lastly, he notes that morticians, for example, you know, people who work in the um, funeral industry, um, due to the advanced uh, state of embalming, give the illusion of life. Um, and I think I mentioned that book, um, Curtains, a kind of journalist learning how to be a funeral director. Um, and in it, he identifies that um, different funeral homes in his region, um, I'm not sure if it's the US or Canada now, but it, different funeral homes tend to have a different kind of signature look that they give to all coffins or dead bodies, sorry, um, in terms of what depth of colour they give the um, person or the dead body prior to funeral. So there's a sense to make people not look as shocking when you look at the dead body, say, an open casket funeral, to make them kind of look a bit alive or in between life and death, not to be too terrifying, to give the idea that death is an inconvenience that can be um, administratively and through um, experts and professionals, taken away. Um, so death is hidden, we ever talk or see death in the same way. And that's really a summary of what Aries has to say, his kind of phases, which we'll explore in more detail. Obviously, you'll read his books. There have been lots of critiques of his work. 
some of them have been on the idea that he's too cold. He he kind of he doesn't approach death from how we feel about it, but how our culture kind of signifies it. Maybe true. Um, perhaps and more concerning, I think for me, is the idea that he seems to cherry pick. He has these sweeping periods full of examples, and there are really good details in his books, lots of um, examples, but um, he picks the examples. Could we not, and might you not be able to, look into those periods and find other examples, because they're quite long periods of history in quite a lot of places, um, examples which completely say the opposite of what he says. Could you, for example, um, develop a counter-narrative that says almost the opposite of what he says? Maybe. So perhaps he's too sweeping, perhaps he's too prone to cherry picking. That is a feature of those big kind of big theme um, books from the period of sociology. But nonetheless, it should be open to criticism. And I like our focus, however, not to be so much on that in discussion in class, though we can explore that. But to be on, that was the 1970s, or his work up to the end of the 70s particularly. That was, although it's scary for those of us who were um, alive then, that was quite a long time ago. Have we seen changes in the 80s and 90s, noughties, we deign to call them, and recently up to now, which is about 2014, um, which signify a big change? Have we seen things like the natural death movement? Um, have we seen reusable coffins? Um, have we seen customizable principal coffins made out of cardboard? Um, the fact that we can have woolen burials, the fact that when I suggest Aries critiques um, of hidden death to people, they're very familiar with them now. People haven't studied this area at all. They seem like commonplaces much more. So is there something getting into culture? Or are people keen to talk about the idea that we should be more open and honest with about death till it actually happens and actually then all our cultural forces um, about hidden death come into play? So how much does that change just talk? How much is significant? Where might, do you think, that take us in the future? That is what I think we're going to focus on when we come back to discuss them. But I think hopefully this has given you a bit of a sense of um, his key thoughts.